So this girl, uh, this girl made this game, and it's a game about, uh, two emo kids. I mean, they're like 20 and 22, like, uh, two emo adults, I guess. Uh, and, and like, there's incest in the game, and it's kind of an edgy game. I actually planned on playing this on stream. Uh, I wanted to play this on stream and see what it was about, because I just thought it was interesting, and something that's sick and weird like this, uh, you know, I think I'd probably enjoy it. So yeah, it's great stream content. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody play this, so yeah, absolutely. I heard, like, through the grapevine on Twitter that, like, they doxed her because people thought that she was trans. Let me see, I think there was a video that I was gonna see if I could find this. Last should be a crime? It is in a lot of places, but not in everywhere. So over the course of the years, we've covered many frustrating and depressing topics on this channel. However, today's topic is definitely up there because it involves another situation where real life people are being hurt over fictional content. It involves a topic we have covered multiple times over the past two months, and that is the horror game, The Coffin of Andy and Lele. Now here is the latest development. Yeah. This is all happening over the past 24 hours. It appears that the developer of The Coffin of Andy and Lele has sold the game's title and terminated her entire online presence. And yeah, many that, people that have is reasonably crazy. assumed that this is the result of the torrent of harassment. I think there's also, like, remember that one guy that made Flappy Bird back in the day? And, like, he just deleted all of his shit as well? It's kind of, like, uh, overwhelming for a lot of people to just, like, have a really big success story like this. And then, like, all of the pressure that that comes with. So, like, it probably wasn't just because of the doxing, because, like, let's be fair, even before this, everybody was mad about this game because it had, like, incest, and apparently somebody else said it had cannibalism in it. Now, are these bad things? No, they make me want to play the game. But, in fact, other people don't feel the same way. So, I think it's probably a compounding of issues. ...that this developer has faced on social media over the past two months, as well as being allegedly doxxed over the past day or so. And this is a very frustrating set of developments. A lot of people have been tagging me with it in any tweets that are yeah. relating to this. And before we get into the actual announcement from the new publisher that has taken over this mm -hmm. title, let's inform or remind ourselves as to why there's so much controversy surrounding yeah. this game. What is this? So about two months ago, the horror Look game- Look at that shit. It's fucking 97% positive. That's a lot of scene girls that played this game and had fun. The Coffin of Andy and Lele was released onto Steam. This was an independently developed game. And over the course of time, this has been a massive success. Over $2 million in revenue has been generated. And there is That's a 97% overwhelmingly positive set of reviews on this game out of the over 8,000 reviews left by mm -hmm. people who purchased this game. And the reason Twitter is angry about this has nothing to do with other horror elements in this game like cannibalism, murder, satanic worship, and so on. They're mad that at the end of the game, there is an optional route that includes incest between these two characters. It's a fucking video game. Who gives a fuck? Like, how do you, like, how is it that a person can exist that cares about this? Isn't that crazy? I don't know how that can happen. Like, how can a person care about it? Just don't play the fucking game. You don't like the game. Now, after playing every single second of this route mm. on stream, I can speak from experience as to what that scene oh, was Jesus. all about. Number one, and of course, part of this time was inflated because I was talking to the chat, yeah, but sure. it took over six hours of gameplay to even reach this optional route. And uh -huh. when it is presented, it is presented as a vision of the future, as a warning as to bad things that are going to happen if their toxic relationship continues. Yeah. It is sent as a warning and it is in no way glorified or showed as something good it is shown as a bad ending and it's supposed to make you uncomfortable just like other traditional horror elements sure but that didn't stop anyone from harassing people who developed the game people who are fans of the game or even artists like this who are making memes based on well, the it's just people that get mad about stupid shit like this 
There's people on the internet that make it their entire personality to not like things. Like, that's all there is to it. And it's a very, uh, it's a very weird culture that we live in. But these are people, like, just absolutely fucking losers. Game and its positive reviews. Don't like it, apply it. Yeah. Steam. Now, I think this quote from back in October really sums up the outrage uh -huh. on Twitter really well. It's basically saying that despite this 98% positive rating on Steam, you would look at Twitter and you would think this game must be horrible and everyone right. hates it. And it's, it's, it's only sold 10 copies at this well, point. Well, this is, again, like, this is the point where, like, Twitter does not represent the real world. Twitter represents people on Twitter. And even that doesn't represent Twitter because there's so many different groups of people that never interact with each other. It's not real. Like, if there's a lot of people on Twitter that are mad about something, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. It doesn't make a difference. So whenever you see people that are upset about this kind of stuff, you have to keep in mind that all of the things that they're thinking, feeling, doing, none of it is of any consequence at all. Because there are many viral tweets dunking on this game that don't oh, sure. reflect the actual experience of people playing the game. Well, these and are these are just tone policers and complainers, right? That's really all there is to it. And uh, incest scam is starting to get on my nerves. Yeah, this is a person who's mad about it. And uh, here's the reason why I think people are positive about a game like this, okay? The reason why they're positive is because I think in a general sense, a lot of internet people are tired of everything being safe modern. Everything is safe modern. There are no uh, complex issues that are discussed. There is no... Uh, you know, layers of complexity around characters that have bad motives. Uh, you know, certain characters are just universally good with no flaws because if the character had flaws, it could somehow reflect some sort of real life stereotype. And just in general, people are tired of corporate storytelling in order to appease losers that don't want to see anything except for what they want to see, right? Like, that's why I think, like, okay, I think Dragonflight is the best example. So when a lot of people see something like this and they see, oh, this is a game with incest and cannibalism, no, people don't really like that particularly. I mean, some do, I'm sure. But, like, that's not the point. The point is that it's a frame of reference and it, like, it moves, like, I guess, like, the over 10 window of, like, what's acceptable in a game to a place that's interesting. So you know that whenever you're playing this game, you actually don't know what you'll expect or what to expect because it's a game that is outside of the scope of what's normally socially acceptable. Because I think most people, not most, a lot, a lot of people are tired with what is socially acceptable nowadays. I think it's boring. And I think a lot of people think the same thing. We have more benign ones like this saying this incest game is starting to get on my nerves with, the you know, with the over 30,000 likes yeah, on this Gate. tweet. Yeah. You have ones like this saying 98% positive because two people actually played it and rated it while the other nine of the entire user base rated high to own the libs. Yes, over 8,000 people purchased this game and played it just so they could give an overwhelmingly positive rating on it. Oh, great. Another anime profile picture that has an opinion. I'm sure we'll have to put that in the garbage with all the rest of them. Yeah, that definitely happened. But you have more direct threats like mm -hmm. this. There was endless threats. You can check out my other videos on this to get I mean, more to be fair, like, I mean, look, look, look. This guy's 21 likes. Like, it has 2,000 people even saw this tweet. Not gonna lie, I beat the fuck out of the dev and anyone who supports this shit. I have to start laying my hands on y'all. Shut, shut the fuck. Just stop it. Just stop it like you're 14. Go to bed. But just here's some tomorrow. examples of the stuff that people are saying about the developer of this game. Saying, not gonna lie, beat the F out of the dev and everyone who supported this stuff. Oh my god. Well, the dev can get his house nuked. That's really impressive. Like, I do think that Twitter, and this is another anime... What the... Hey, yo, I played this fucking game. This is the needy streamer overload. 
oh, okay, so getting this girl to go on a drug-induced rampage and have a psychotic breakdown where she kills herself from an overdose, that's totally fucking fine. And you're going to make that your character profile picture. But the moment that you have incest, somehow that's your line? Are we fucking kidding? What is this? How can you be so fucking stupid? I, it, it's crazy. Like, look at the irony here. And this game was sick. I loved it. I do think Twitter should ban the people like this. I, I do think, unironically, posts like this should be immediate perma. Uh, immediate perma, you're done. It's a threat. LOL, no? Okay. So you don't think this is a threat. Gary, do you think this is a threat or not? It's real simple. Is it a threat or is it not a threat? fucking simple Gary what are you doing come on what do we waste our fucking time for just oh fuck I just never mind okay Jesus I send fucking five hours waiting for this shit it's obviously a fucking threat do you remember that one guy that um you know the police busted in his mom's house <laughs> And arrested him and like, bro, like, the dude, they drugged this kid through the fucking mud. And the kid, he's like 28, right? They drugged this guy through the fucking mud because he said he was going to kill uh, the sheriff in Minecraft. And the sheriff just pulled up. He, he said, all right, okay, let's pull up, see what happens. And he's done. Nah, bro, like, you really don't believe that. Like, you're, you're talking shit that's not true and again, nobody would ever tweet this at the president because it's a fucking threat. Nobody would do it because they know exactly what would happen. My honest reaction, of course, this user is pulling out a gun. Yep. This person saying, no way, they got Epstein making games. That's just a, he's just joking around. It's just joking around. Like, it, it's 14 like This is not even a bit, what are we doing? We're going to pull up a, a tweet with 14 likes. It's just, this guy's just goofing. It's a joke. This person saying, how long do you think it'll take for the dev to be outed as a sex offender? I give it four months. This is stupid, but it's not terrible. And I covered a lot of these, like I said, in some of my videos. And I will say from my personal experience going through this, this video and the accompanying ones, I have never received mm -hmm. more hostility on social media really? than anything involving these videos, okay? And I've covered a lot of controversial topics. I've, I've gotten under the skin of a lot of people over the years but nothing quite like this. The Why? amount of death threats and harassment and false allegations I got out of this was insane. Just by me Oh, well, now I definitely need to play this game. I'll have content for weeks. Why Twitter is freaking out about this one optional route and is okay with other themes like cannibalism and so on. And that was enough to cause a torrent yeah. of hate across social media. But nonetheless, here we are at the update. This has all happened over the past 24 hours. And a lot of people are talking about this situation because yeah, it is sure. just about as bad of an ending as we could have gotten to this whole game. And well, it's, it's not the, it's not the worst ending because like they're still going to continue developing the story and the art for the game. So it's just that somebody else is going to be publishing it for privacy reasons. It's not like the game's being canceled and deleted like Flappy Bird was. So, yeah, I mean, there it is. Yes, and this is the unfortunate ending to an ongoing series, by the way. There is a part three of this game to come out, and it's supposed to come out in the next month or so. So let's read the actual statement. So a publisher named Kit9 purchased the title of this game, and this is their statement on Steam. It says, as per request from the primary developer... We have another person. I don't know why, but this person is just hyper fixated about arguing about this you think anyone thinks the gift from big lebowski is a threat okay do you have a twitter what are you doing why are you arguing again do you have a twitter account yes okay then tweet the gif at joe biden and see what happens see what happens you do that
It was about Joe Biden. It's about whether it's a threat or not. That's a ban. You're being dishonest and you know it. Yeah, that's a ban. You, yeah. <laughs> See, he tried to change because he knew. He knew he doesn't really believe it. He doesn't really believe it. He thinks he does. But then whenever he has to prove it on a level of accountability that could affect him in real life, if his stupid opinion was wrong. Hey! Whoa, that's not what I'm talking about. Hey! Hey, you arguing with chatters? Yeah. You fucking goober. What are you I doing? Know. I Well, I'm just watching a video about this game. When are you going to fucking learn, buddy? Learn what? All right, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you react. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Go okay. Go ahead. Sure. No, go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. Okay. Kid okay. Nine Studio has acquired the title, The Coffin of Andy and Lele. Our team of freelancers will handle the programming, community management, customer mm -hmm. support, business contacts, and legal disputes. The original developer will continue providing the art and story. We will do our best to support them as they create the game they want to create. On a sadder note, the developer has decided to permanently and completely terminate their activities online from here on. The mm -hmm. best way to show your support is by focusing your discussions towards the game and not the developer. They wish to be left alone. There will be no communications or information forwarded to the developer from this point onward. They are choosing to remain completely in the dark and to continue their work happily offline. Other than Kit9 Studio stepping into the role of owner and publisher, the developer of the coffin- That's kind of a crazy thing to say. There will be no communications or information forwarded to the developer from this point onward. Like, that's actually, like, really, uh, like, dark. Jesus, yeah, it's pretty sad, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Vandy and Lele will continue to proceed with no change in plans. The, de mm -hmm. the, the devlog for December will still be delivered as originally promised, and there will be the final words from the developer. All future game announcements afterwards will be handled by Kit9 Studio. Going forward, discussions outside this thread about the developers of this project are considered off topic and will be removed. Now, the important thing to look at here, let's start with the positives, okay? If there can really be positives. Uh, the developer who was responsible for the entirety of the first two episodes of this game mm -hmm. will continue and lead this story for the final third part, which is a good thing. They're going to be very well involved. And also on the positive, it looks like Kit9 is doing a very good job of wanting to support the existing project and basically be there as an assist to the developer. As well, they're basically like a firewall. Like, they're here, they're in the way of the people that are going to, like, harass the developer, and they're like a target dummy or something like that. Asmon went woke? Wait, did I, I go woke? Wait, when did I, why'd I go woke? What's this? Yo, just tell this guy to woke your dick and then move on. Wanna grow a pussy? What the fuck? <laughs> what is, who is this guy? You've been sitting here talking shit for, like, 30 minutes you finally get pulled up and now you're like oh I, no I, that's not really what i meant you know like come on oh my god i'm gonna wait for this for like an hour okay let's see here she continues working on this game offline and they're basically taking the public role of owning it mm -hmm. and that is a good thing but the obvious bad in this is that the people who are harassing this person, they they in a sense won. They they were silent. They silenced this developer and yeah. forced them offline. You know, and it's a mix of the harassment and the alleged doxing that led to this. And it is driven. Well, the funny thing about it is that it didn't even work because this the game still exists. The person that made the game is still going to keep making the game. It's just published by a different group of people. Yeah, nothing worked them off of the internet entirely and it's completely and utterly disgusting behavior okay all of this yeah. boils down to an optional route in a fictional setting mm -hmm. from a video game and this person was hurt they were harmed as a person and even had their safety allegedly put at risk because of the doxing of course because of this and it's so insane to see people not only justifying this but celebrating how this all went down when they could have seen this game that they didn't like containing themes they didn't like in a fictional setting, they could have just moved on. 
That's yeah. all they could have done. And also people have pointed out that there are other sites like this one right here, which is a site that independent developers use to sell their game. The developer has completely wiped their presence off of that as well, including Jesus. their former games. So wow. they are completely off the grid in terms of the internet. They have removed That's probably a good idea. all of these things, not just from a you know an aspect of yeah. being present online, but also business opportunities. They are removing things like their former games as well and options mm -hmm. to buy them. It's a really messed up situation. And in terms of my tweet, I really didn't get much hostility on just my simple report of what happened. But there was one tweet in particular I wanted to point out. It was the only one I responded to. And to make a long story short, you have an artist, in particular a furry artist, saying, actually, I think normalizing... A furry artist. Uh-oh. An artist, in particular a furry artist, saying, actually, I think normalizing incest is bad. Call it a hot take. To the degree people should... Now, I'm going to say something that everybody knows, but nobody wants to say. If you have a Venn diagram, you have a, a two circles, and one circle is of the general population, and the other circle is of the people that want to have sex with animals. These two circles will be farther apart than if the general population circle was furries instead. Everybody knows it. Nobody wants to say it, but it's there. Draw it? Sure. Let's draw it. Okay. So, as you can see referenced by the chart, the correlation I'm trying to prove is that I think furries have a higher propensity to try to have sex with animals than the general population. And the reason why I bring this topic up, that by the way, everybody fucking knows this is true, why are we even talking about it? The reason why is that you have no moral high ground to shit on somebody for making an incest game because of somehow it is being normalized whenever you are doing something that there is a higher group of people that fuck animals that are a part of your community. And by the way, you can be a furry, and this is totally okay. I have no problem with furries. It's your life, and you can live it the way that you want. But don't you go fucking moralizing about what other people do. That's all there is to it. Does the chart make sense, guys? Yes. Thank you for drawing it. Yes. And we all know it. Right? We all know this. It's an amazing chart. Yes. The second circle should be bigger. Probably should be. You have no problem with people fucking animals? I would prefer if they didn't. I'm... I'm yeah, I, I don't think that's a good thing. I prefer if they didn't do it. Somebody in chat type, I'm not... <laughs> Oh no. Rightfully respond to the creator, I do not know, but I'm not going to complain that this happened to them. Yes, this person is having a moral quandary, whether it's right or not, to dox someone and put their personal safety yeah. at risk because of themes in a video game. Mm -hmm. Now, I would go back and forth with this person and eventually it proved pretty quickly that it was going nowhere, but to sum up some of the things they're trying to say as a justification mm -hmm. is that this is presented in a way that encourages people in real life to imitate it. And uh, not only does the game not glorify that optional route, it is not the job of the developer to tell full grown adults that themes like that are bad. Just like yeah, these are adult characters too in the game. Like it says how old the characters are. This one's 20, this one's 22 apparently. So it's not like this is some weird, you know, weird thing. They don't have to tell you the cannibalism and murder in that game is bad. They don't need to tell you this optional route is bad either for a competent adult to understand that that is not a promotion of those things mm -hmm. as real life counterparts. And this would just go on and on and, and, and you know, 
Again, this is a furry artist. Like, do you really want these normalization standards in terms of fictional content to apply to the artwork yeah. that you make? It's absolutely ridiculous and it's frustrating to see and it's always extra frustrating when it involves artists saying things like this. At the end of the day, I don't care how problem- I don't want to have a furry tell me about morality and what I can and can't do. That's all there is to it. They can do what they want. But I don't want to he hear them tell me what I want to do. You think this fictional content is nobody should be harmed in real life. Mm -hmm. That just makes no sense. There is no way you can justify that without sounding like a completely unreasonable person. And yeah. these threads and reactions to this sort of a situation are just eye-opening and disgusting. But at the end of the day, this is a very sad ending to a very successful game. Okay. I am one of many people believing that this game was snubbed. I always thought this too. Yeah, isn't this interesting how like this whole game and everything was made by a uh, by a girl? And like usually whenever there's like a girl that uh you know, is doing something in gaming like these companies it's always about, "Oh my god, we have to get women in gaming, women in gaming." A woman makes a game and they're like, "Well, not like that." Well, what the fuck? It's almost like they don't really care about women making games and they're just using it to advertise themselves to look good. Which would be pretty fucked up, right? Jeez. In terms of recognition, it's especially weird. from gaming journalists and game awards and things like that, it's been completely ignored. And that likely is because of the negative reaction on Twitter, which apparently in the eyes of, you know, gaming journals, for example, mm -hmm. outweighs the actual content and the actual tangible success yeah. of this game. And here you have an independent creator having massive success by themselves, and it doesn't get recognized. In fact, it gets punished by a bunch of weirdos online. Well, yeah, it's but about that's right. going to do it for this video. I look forward Jesus. to the final part of The Coffin of Andy and Lele being released, and I hope it stays true to the vision of the original developer. But yeah, sad situation today, so please share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Jesus, bro, like... <laughs> Dude, imagine you get fucking pissed off about that. I'll link y'all the video. This is a good video. I'm glad that I learned about this. I hate people that are like this, man. I hate them. Don't forget, like, yeah, this is a good video. W video, exactly. It's a nothing burger. It's a handful of people hating on it because the develop and the developer overreacted. Is there even proof of doxing? Yeah, there's proof of it. I don't know. I, I still think people are being stupid, even if that's not it. Yeah, this is a good video. Nobody involves a subject. Call anybody else weirdos. Yeah, exactly. Like, and this is the, it's like that Spider-Man meme where they're pointing at each other. It's like you got furries pointing at the, these fucking people playing this goddamn game. You're all fucking weird. Like, just stop it. Like, stop your, oh, well, they're not. Like, it's like you ever in like, in like elementary school, do you ever have like the fat kid in your class call the fatter kid? kid in your class fat it's like of all the people to say it it had to be you oh now you're saying it <laughs> what the fuck like yeah it's the same thing man